You can see it, right? Uh, it's audible, right? Emma or somebody, you can box. Yes. Thank you. Some of them are writing the voice is not heard. And okay. So uh, here you can see there is a p value. There is a p value. Uh, what we're trying to do is where this is a study which try to assess factors that affect the patient's status of becoming whether symptomatic or symptomatic after uh, being infected with COVID-19. So we have a case control study design. Our cases are patients with symptomatic COVID-19. These are the cases and the controls are patients who were asymptomatic. So these are our controls. We're trying to compare our cases and controls based on different factors, as you can see on the table. Uh, all of the, the tastes that we have seen so far, chi-square, T-taste, ANOVA correlation with their non-parametric correlates, all of the tastes give us p-values. So by seeing the p-values, we will decide or we will declare if there is a significant difference uh, between the groups or not. So um, the way uh, we pick that or the way we decide there is a significant difference or not is by seeing the statistical cutoff point, which is the p-value. So without that, we can't say if there is a significant difference or not. So uh, it, here on the table, it says just p-value. It doesn't tell us the, the name of the taste. It's not a trend to put the, the name of uh, the taste on. You, you can see the article, right? It just says, you just shared the screen. I don't know. You can see the article, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, we only have p-values, uh, but we don't know which taste we have used. Where we put the name of the taste is in a different section, not on the table. So it's assumed that the audience, uh, who is a professional audience, uh, automatically knows what p-value is this taste for. For example, here uh, I have compared age with uh, between my cases and controls. So there is a p-value, which is 0 0.0001. So which test do you think uh, we have run to get this p-value? Inbox me. So the, uh, based on the options that we have, which test did we run to get this p-value? First, let's see the group. So this is a symptom group, right? It's a symptom group. Based on the symptom, we have asymptomatic and symptomatic groups. That means this is a categorical variable. We have age. Age is presented in categories as well. So this is also a categorical variable, right? So we have two categorical variables compared. So what's the proper test? Chi-square test, right? Thank you. So we have used a chi-square test. Thank you. Well, thank you. And it, thank you. So we have used a chi-square test. As you can see, for all of uh, the tastes on the p-values on this table, since the case in the controls or the symptom outcome is uh, a categorical variable, as you can see, all of them are categorical variables here. And the proper test that, that we, sh we should use is for all of them. It's a chi-square test, right? So we have used chi-square tests for, to compare all of these groups since they all are categorical variables. So the p-value for this is chi-square test. So as a researcher, you're expected to know what type of test was run to get this p-value. So it should not be strange for you. When we go to the second table, here we have again our outcome, which is cases and controls. Two responses, it's a categorical variable. But here we have temperature, heart rate, the vital signs, CBC values, and organ function test with electrolytes. And we have p-values here. So tell me, uh, what is the proper test that was run to get the association or the similarity and difference between the outcome and temperature? We have a p-value here, right? So to get the, the p-value 0.676, uh, what is the proper test that we should run? These are completely different groups. It's all right, by the way, don't frustrate if this is your first time picking tastes. It's something that you get used to 
through practice, so don't worry. So just go through it uh, slowly. So we have our outcome, which has two responses. So we have a categorical variable with two responses, and we have a numeric variable here. So what we're doing here is actually all of them are numeric variables. We have used the same test for all. Uh, it's a numeric variable. And we have one categorical variable. And this categorical variable is with two responses. And these groups are different, right? These groups are different groups. They are different groups. They're not paired. We have some groups who were asymptomatic and a different group of patients were symptomatic. So we have two dependent, uh, different or independent categories and we have a numerical variable. So the proper test to use is, thank you, an independent t-test. So here, independent t-test is the proper test to run. So we just write the p-value because as researchers and as professional readers, it's expected that the audience automatically knows what kind of test was run and that the assumptions were made. So, but this doesn't mean that when we are not going to explain the type of test that we use on our article. So here's the part where we explain the type of tests that we use, the data management and analysis section, uh, a section before the results. Here, uh, we present all types of statistical tests that we use for the description, the comparison and the regression including their assumption uh, that we're going to measure. Thank you. You guys are doing great, by the way. If this is especially your first time, this is this is more than excellent. Thank you so much. So here we have wrote that, uh, we have uh, wrote a plan for data summarization or descriptive analysis. We have talked about categorical covariate summarization, about numerical variable summarization using mean, and other values appropriately. And here it says that a chi-square test and an independent uh, t-test were run to determine the presence of significant difference between the independent variables and the development of septamilar. So statistically significant difference was uh, declared based on a p-value of less than 0.05 filar. This is something that you can learn uh, by going to the group as I have explained earlier. So the tests that we used are going to be explained here on the data management and analysis section. But when we go to the tables, we're not expected to write the type of test that we used because uh, as a professional readers, it's automatically expected from all of us to identify the tests because it's like it's assumed that we are researchers and we know these tests. So this is how you pick your test. And we have used chi-square tests for this table and we have used independent tests for this table. 